Thank you, Joe. And hi, everyone. Um, it's wonderful to be with you all today. And thank you for the chance to be part of the learning community. What a great group. Um, the Manure Shed Group was born and raised in the USDA's Long-Term Agroecosystem Research Network, otherwise known as LTAR, or as some people call it, LTAR. And we are a team of 18 sites across the U.S. who are tackling major problems and major challenges facing U.S. and Canadian agriculture. And we evaluate strategies for those challenges against goals in different domains of sustainability and sustainable intensification, such as environmental goals, productivity goals, goals in the human condition domain, economic goals, um, and social goals. And one of the major issues that we are tackling or that we think about quite a bit is, are those problems related to the uneven distribution of manure nutrients in US agriculture and in other agricultural systems worldwide? So we tend to think, spend a lot of time thinking about situations like this one where we see a lot of corn produced in the upper Midwest of the US and a lot of that corn being consumed by the poultry of the Southeast and no clear mechanisms to return the manure nutrients from the poultry back to the corn to grow more corn for future poultry. Um, and we recognize that these are systems level challenges. Um, there's no one producer, no one industry, no one policymaker or consumer who can solve this, this kind of in, this ongoing issue. And so we are seeking systems level solutions. And with that, we've created the concept or we find the concept of the manure shed, which we define as the land surrounding animal feeding operations onto which manure nutrients can be redistributed to meet environmental production and economic goals. So there again, you see those different domains of sustainability and sustainable intensification. And we're interested in manure shed management at multiple scales from on farm to between farms within a county or a municipality, or even among farms across state, county, or national lines. And a lot of the work that we do entails weighing the practical dimensions with the theoretical dimensions of connecting animal and crop agriculture, which I'm sure most of you know is not um, a simple feat given uh, specialization of agriculture and different types of concentration that we see at local to national scales. So this is our concept and we, and we see it also as a potential paradigm for thinking not only about redistributing manure nutrients, but also as a way to tackle issues around land health, um, animal productivity, and economic um, viability for producers. So we've developed this vision of optimized manure shed management within regions and within industries. So really thinking about what's the best case scenario for recycling and you know, how can we minimize the trade-offs involved? And so we think really a lot of these scales of regions and industries, but always with an eye toward nationwide optimization. And again, we are always thinking about this grand suite of trade-offs in these different domains. So in order to achieve this vision or even just work toward it of um, optimizing regional scale or industry scale manure shed, management or, or manure sheds, we have a multi-step cycle that we have developed and kind of informally adopted um, to really try to tackle these things. And I'm going to run through them, each of the steps. And then our other fabulous speakers are going to um, really drill into some more specific elements of these steps. So a first step um, that we've become pretty good at, I will say, or just that we've worked on a lot, is identifying hot spots of surplus manure um, and productive lands that could potentially use it. And we, you'll hear throughout the talks that we use the term source and sink, and together, you know, you identify a source, you identify associated sinks, and you can consider that a manure shed again at different scales. Um, 
The next thing we usually do is explore management in that manure shed, see what's already happening there. And we rely on past surveys and new surveys, some new interview data and local expertise from researchers and our extension partners and our producer partners to really understand what's happening with manure management, land management, what are the concerns, um, what are the opportunities. Leading us to our next step, which is a really more formal evaluation of opportunities and barriers for coordinated recycling. And this step really entails a ton of work and a ton of multi, like multidisciplinary expertise to really explore opportunities, let's say from um, technologies that Joe works on with struvite extraction, um, new opportunities for transport, and then potential barriers around, let's say, odor concerns, um, expense of transporting manure, and a lot of these will be addressed um, in the talks that you hear, especially from, from Rob. And these opportunities are also um, really, like, there's the human element of these opportunities, and social networks are the things that really underlie or enable manure shed management to occur and to be optimized and Gwender will be telling us more about that. So um, there's no silver bullets in agricultural management, in land management, in e agroecosystem management. And so once we, you know, using the knowledge from these previous steps, we take a hard look at the trade-offs of manure recycling at, at whatever scale we are, we are looking at. This is kind of mostly just a heuristic diagram, just an example of looking at some potential trade-offs of widespread manure shed, coordinated manure shed um, recycling, um, again, across those different domains. And so really recognizing, again, there's the manure shed concept is not a silver bullet, but it really is a, is a way to weigh trade-offs trade and different pros and cons simultaneously. And then this step five is a growing edge for us and something that we're increasingly interested in doing is ensuring engagement and informational feedbacks with practitioners, with policymakers, with other researchers, with, with industry and corporations, um, really to ensure that the information that we've collected and synthesized in these previous steps can be actionalized and, um, and really made into reality. Again, all with that objective toward industry scale or regional scale the more sheds. Importantly, this is a cycle. So we could apply this at, you know, to a different, to a given region or a different industry. And then by the time we're at the end toward five, you know, the best case scenario is we go back to one and we see some differences in number one um, that most of the stakeholders identify as optimal or And so with those steps in mind, um, it really does require a lot of multidisciplinary expertise, a lot of coordination and a lot of collaboration. And that's where the Menorah Shed Group has, um, has become kind of a, a, like a, a touchstone or, or, or a foundation for analyzing gaps and catalyzing innovation. Um, and we're lucky enough to have folks on our in the USDA, the Greater Long-Term Agroecosystem Research Network, who have expertise in all of these types of knowledge that are needed to inform those five steps. So in inventory and geospatial patterns, to social networks, to make affordable technologies, to make manure more of a, of a, a resource that can be transported farther distances. Um, to economic incentivization from the farm scale all the way to the regional and national scales. And as Joe mentioned, the identify, identification of emerging threats. As I say, we are lucky enough to have a team who um, has expertise in this, but we're always seeking partners and we look forward to meeting a lot of you and seeing where collaborative opportunities exist. Oh, and then one key thing is I keep saying this thing about optimization. And so this really looks, this is really taking all of these different types of knowledge, all of these different pros and cons and the trade-offs and really identifying how optimization would occur. And that's kind of its own land over there that has to do with models and a lot of visioning. Um, and of course, models are only good, as good as the information you put into it. So we're always super careful um, with the models we use and discuss. 
But here's just a smattering of photos of our talented team. Um, we have soil scientists and forage agronomists. Uh, we have folks specializing in all different animal industries, in rangelands, um, in croplands, and we're lucky enough to have extension folks with us. Um, and so just want to thank this team. And what's been really an enjoyable piece of all this work is that we have the diversity of expertise and we're from a diversity of locations, but we're all focused on a similar goal of, of advancing this manure shed vision and really trying to find solutions to some of these intractable challenges that, that are facing US agriculture. So you're in for a treat today. We have some of our most talented manure shed uh, collaborators here with us. So Dr. Colton Flynn will be focusing on this first step of our five of our five step cycle, where he's really going to be focusing on the geospatial tools that we've developed and that we've learned from other folks um, how to find these sources and sinks. And then we're going to hear from Gwenda Meredith, who's a social scientist, who's really focused on the social networks that underlie manure shed management and really enable this to occur. And also learning from our producer partners and from our community partners about those opportunities and barriers. So we're very lucky to have a social scientist on our team. And then Rob Minan will be talking about really all of these steps and applying them to his work on um, what we call the hog shed or the hog manure shed work that he's been developing over the last few years. And with that, I would like to thank you all and say enjoy the next few talks and I'll turn it over to Colton. So thank you.